Good evening. Can I check if I am audible on your side? Can I check if you can hear me so we can get started? Can you hear you loud and clear? Can I check that? Right, uh, Leticia. Yes, we can hear you, sir. I can hear you. Thank you. disappeared now. We can hear anything, some of us. Right. Can can I check if I am uh, clearly uh, audible to you so that we can get started? Yes, you are. Can I? Yes. You you can indicate either by talking or by text. We can hear you. Yeah, yeah, audible you. now. We can hear you. Thank you. Your we conversation. You may begin. You may begin. Is it uh, still the position? Is it is it safe for me to assume that everyone is hearing me and uh, we can then proceed? Right. I can Thank hear you. you. Thank yes. you. Thank you. Yes. All right. Okay. Fine, fine, fine. I see your responses. You say that I am audible and we can then proceed. Fine. Um, let us um, uh, start then. I am Titi Marabe. I am an attorney by profession and um, an instructor at the School for Legal Practice. We will be together from today up until the 18th on Saturday on this um, module, Legal Practitioners Account uh, Management. It is an interesting module. It in fact is the easiest of all the modules you are doing with the School for Legal Practice you'll find it um, enjoyable as well. You simply need to pay attention. You simply need to participate and give us the whole of your attention. And that way you will master the subject. And you will agree with me at the end that it in fact is the easiest of all the courses you have ever come across at the School for Legal Practice. All right, so I am going to expect you to uh, be with me, participate. There are times when I'll be asking you questions and I'll expect you to speak so that um, at the end we can satisfy ourselves that we understand the subject uh, better. Um, EJ, you are saying you hear a lot of echo. Is it not where you are? Does everyone hear the same thing that um, EJ hears? No. From no, this mic? No, okay. No. No echo on my side. So EJ, 
it must be your no, own no. Um, uh, computer speaker, uh, EJ, because um, the others are not hearing what you are hearing. So please fix that, uh, EJ. Uh, please fix that so that um, you can also hear me loudly, clearly, and or nicely if the language allows that. All right, can can we get uh, started? Yes, Mohoro, I agree with you. Uh, Mohoro, obviously, if a person wants to speak, they will raise their hand and I'll allow them to speak. And that way there's going to be order. But for the duration of the lecture, please ensure that your mics are muted. Please ensure that your mics are muted. Um, we should not hear your background. We should not hear the other things that you are busy with there when we are uh, busy with the lecture, please. So if, if there'll be a time when I will allow you to speak and if I do so, you will simply raise your hand and when I point to you, you then unmute yourself and speak. I think there's going to be a lot of order there. Can we now proceed? Right, let, let us start um, in this very simple way. Let us start in this very simple way. You are doing a course called mm. Legal Practitioners Account Management. In this course, the understanding should be that you are an attorney practicing for your own account. You are an attorney practicing for your own account. And you know that as an attorney practicing for your own account, you are now running a business. You are now running a business. You are a business person. You have set up a business undertaking. You've set up a business undertaking and your type of business is professional in nature. It is professional and it is regulated by law. It is regulated by law. The law that regulates your business as a legal practitioner is the Legal Practice Council. You are regulated by the Legal Practice Council and the rules of the Legal Practice uh, Council. So you have the Legal Practice Act on the one hand and the rules of the Legal Practice uh, Council. These rules and the Act regulate your conduct and or practice as a legal practitioner. You need to comply with this at all costs. You need to comply with the Legal Practice Council rules and with the Legal Practice Act. Right. For your important paper study, I see your, your hand is up. Yes, yes, sir. I was just asking Luazi to, we've been writing there on the chat box for him or her to mute herself or himself, because we can Starting, hear the ground. Your hand is up. What's happening? Is it a mistake? Can you hear me? Anna, please put your hand down because you you seem to have raised it by mistake. All right. The Sorry, law sir. requires that as a legal practitioner, you must have 
two banking accounts. The law requires that as a legal practitioner, you must have two banking accounts. What are these two banking accounts that you must have as a legal practitioner? One, you need to have the trust banking account and two, you need to have the business banking account. So the trust banking account and the business banking account are accounts you need to have as a legal practitioner practicing for your own account. The law will not allow you to practice as a legal practitioner for your own account if you do not have these two banking accounts. You need to have these so that you can practice. You can't practice without a trust account as an attorney when you want to practice on your own or for your own account, or when you want to practice independently. In simple terms, in simple terms, you cannot set up a practice if you do not have a trust banking account. You need to have a trust banking account on the one hand and a business banking account on the other. Why do you need these two banking accounts? What is the significance of these two banking accounts? You need them for the following reasons. Let us start with the trust account. You need to have a trust account because as a legal practitioner, practicing for your own account, you will deal with funds belonging to clients. You will deal with funds belonging to your clients. You will deal with funds which have been entrusted to you by other people or by members of the public. So for as long as you are dealing with funds which do not belong to you, for as long as you are dealing with funds which belong to members of the public, for as long as you are dealing with funds which belong to your clients, funds which you have received from third parties for or on behalf of your clients, you must have a trust account and this is the account into which those funds not belonging to you must be deposited. You cannot deposit these funds into your personal banking account or your business banking account. You need the trust banking account for dealing with money or funds belonging to other persons or belonging to your clients or to members of the public or funds you have received from third parties on behalf of your clients. So this is why you will need to have, and in fact, you must have a trust banking account. Why do you need the business account? Why can't you use the trust account for everything? You need the business banking account in order to deal with funds belonging to your practice, you need the 
business banking account in order to deal with funds which belong to your practice. These are the profits that you have earned. These are the fees that you have earned. This is money that belongs to you. This is money that belongs to you. This money has to be dealt with in the business banking account. So this is why you need to have both these accounts. This is why you need to have both these accounts, the trust banking account and the business banking account. And this is because you will be using these accounts for different purposes. Abongile Majeke, I am seeing your hand is up. Do you have a question for me, uh, Abongile? Or is it um, raised by mistake? No, it's an issue here. It was, right, I, think, I assume I think it, was. it was raised uh, by mistake. Right, the uh, mic, sir. He is talking. So, sorry, sir. Uh, proceed. Sorry, sir. We are sorry, sir. Loazi, can you please uh, mute yourself? Please uh, mute yourself, uh, Loazi. Is there any question? on what I have said so far. Right, we we are proceeding. Um, Abongile, your, your hand is still up. Can you please lower it? Right. I'm seeing there's a hand that is still up here. Uh, Abongile? Can no, you please not, lower it's not, it? It's not my mind. I join uh, Pinar. I see, I see a hand. Hi, sir. Can you hear me? Hi, sir. Can you hear me? Hi, JP. Khadebe, your hand is also up. Um, hi, sir. We're just trying to check if you can hear us. Police. Sir, can you hear us? It looks like there is... Uh, JP, it seems you are talking, but I cannot hear you. The instructor yeah, can I, hear anything. I think there's a problem. Somebody. I suggest that those who can't hear each other log off. And log back in. Yes. I think we no, maybe need to type it. The instructor cannot hear any Thank of you. us. Yeah, log off and log in again. We can we can hear him perfectly. The instructor can hear. But I doubt we can hear yeah, what you are saying. No. I don't think I uh, can hear you. Can hear us. That's the problem. Yeah, okay. the problem is not with us. The problem is um, with Okay, the instructor, let's, let's can you see then? Let us can you log then. off and log on again? I thought you had questions. Mohoro, you you are saying something, but I cannot hear you. Yeah, I was saying, can you log? Let me type. Yeah, I think that would be better. Log off and log on back again. Matebula, you are also saying something, but I cannot hear you. Can you please unmute yeah, yourself if, if you, are, you want to speak? We are talking, but you cannot hear us, uh, uh, sir. Yeah, log off and log on again, sir. Okay, I just sent him a WhatsApp. Uh, uh, can I, I just speak with you for uh, maybe? Uh, okay, thanks. <laughs> 
Thank you, Zuki. Okay. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hey, just log off. Just just call log in back. Just wait. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hello. 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 Yes, Makoto, I hear you. Oh, sorry. sir, can you hear us? Yes, I hear you now. Thank you. Well, Thank good. you very much. Thank you. Let's proceed. Right, right, right. So I, I take it we we are still together up to here and that there are no questions. Not so. Right, let's let's proceed. Let's proceed. So the law also requires that as a legal practitioner practicing for your own account, you need to have books of account. You need to have accounting books. You need to have books that you use when you want to record transactions which take place in your practice. In fact, you are required to record every financial transaction that takes place in your practice. Every financial transaction that takes place in your practice must be recorded. What does this mean? When you receive funds, you need to record this in your books of account. When you make payments or when you make payouts, you need to record these transactions. When you render services and charge fees, these two must be recorded. Every transaction that has financial implications must be recorded. So you need to have books that you will use to record these transactions. You need to have two sets of books. You need to have two sets of books of account. The one set relates to trust transactions and the other relates to business transactions. So you, in other words, need to have trust set of books and business set of books. For the purposes of your trust account, you will have a book called Trust Cash 
book for the purposes of your business account you will have a book called business cash book these books are very important these books are very important i may also say that the trust cash book represents your trust account in the practice whilst the business cash book represents the business account in your practice these cash books are used to record the flow of cash. You only make use of them when you are dealing with money, which is either coming in or going out. You only go to a cash book when you are recording the receipt of money or when money is going out cash books just as the name suggests deal with cash transactions cash books deal with cash transactions you do not go to a cash book if there is no money either coming in or going out the only time you will go to a cash book or the only time you will use or record in a cash book is when there is flow of cash But it is also important for you to know how this book looks like. How does a cash book look like? It is important for you to know how a cash book looks like. A cash book looks like the capital letter T. Cash book looks like the capital letter T. Is my screen visible to you? Yes, sir. Yes. Right. Yes, it's visible. Right. Yes. This is how a cash book looks like you draw it like you are drawing the capital letter t do you see this mm. this yes. is a this yes. is a capital letter yes. t yes when you draw up a cash book it takes this form it takes this form. You will see that, you will see that there are two sides of these capital letter T. You will see that there are two sides of these capital letter T. You have the left hand side and the right hand side. Do you see this? You have the left hand side and the right hand side. The left hand side is also called the debit side. Whilst, whilst the right hand side is called the credit side.
In a cash book, in a cash book, which I said to you is only used to record money that is either coming in or going out. When you record on the debit side, it means that money is coming in. It means that money is coming in or you are receiving money. Money is coming in or you are receiving money. And when you record mm. on the credit side of the cash book, it means money is going out. Money is going out. You are taking money out of the account. You are taking money out of the account when you record on the credit side. Are we together up to here? Yes, sir. So, right. So this should not matter whether it is a trust cash book or business cash book. For as long as it is a cash book, the debit side is used to receive money and the credit side is used to take money out of the account. The debit side is used to receive money and the credit side is used to take money out of the account account. Does it make sense to you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Right. Yes, sir. So yes, it sir. is important. It, 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 it is important that you master this. It is important that you master this because this is what you will be doing throughout. This is what you will be doing throughout. You will deal with exercises where you are receiving money and you are making payments. So it is important for you to know that in a cash book, you record the receipt of money on the debit side and payouts are recorded on the credit side of the cash book. Perhaps the only question you may ask may be which of the cash books do I use? Which cash book do you use and under which circumstances? As we said earlier, when you are dealing with trust money, you will make use of the trust set of books. And when you are dealing with business money, you will make use of the business set of books. In other words, when you receive money in trust, you will record on the debit side of the trust cash book. When you receive money in business, you will debit on the business cash book. That should be as simple as that. That should be as simple as that. So the business cash book will be used to record cash transactions relating to the business account, whilst the trust cash book will be used to record transactions relating to the trust account. How do you draw a distinction between trust and business money? How do you tell easily that this is trust money and not business money, or that this is business money and not trust money? How do you tell easily? How do you draw this distinction between trust and business money? 
This should not be complicated for you. It should not be difficult for you in any way. Ask yourself the following questions when you receive money or when you receive a payment. Ask yourself this. Why am I receiving this money? Why? What is it for? Is it for me to render services? Is it for me to pay over to my client? Is it for me to pay for something on behalf of my client? Or is it for services that I have already rendered for my client or on behalf of my client? These are the questions you must ask yourself. And once you answer these questions, you will know what money this is for. You will know if it is trust or business money. For instance, if the answer to the questions raised is that it is money you have received from your client in order for you to render services in the future, then you know that, then you know that it is not your money. It is not your money it is still money belonging to your client until you have rendered the relevant service. Please mute yourselves. Please mute yourselves there. So if the answer to the questions I have asked earlier is that you have received the money from your client in order for you to pay for something on behalf of your client, then you know in this regard as well that it is not your money. It is money that belongs to your client or it is money belonging to a third party. It is not your money. And because it is not your money, it will not be dealt with in the business account. It will have to be dealt with in the trust banking account. It will have to go to the trust banking account because that is the account that you use for funds which do not belong to you. But if your answer to the questions is that this is money that was paid to you, after you rendered services. It is money for work you have done on behalf of the depositor. Then it means that it is your money. It belongs to you. And because it is yours, it must be dealt with in the business banking account. Because in the business banking account, that is when you deal with funds which belong to you. In the business banking account, that is when you deal with funds which belong to you. Any questions so far? Are we together so far? <laughs> Hi, Minette Leroux. Um, I've got a question. Can you please give us an example of when you pay something on the heart of a client? We will do so. Simeon, okay. we will do so, Mina. Thank you for that question. I, Simeon, I saw your hand. Oh, sorry, it's a mistake. All right, all right. Thank you. I, uh, Belinda, I'm happy. Um, yes, sir. I wanted to ask, like, when you receive the money from the trust account, does that mean that you credit the trust account and then you debit your business account at the same time? No, 
when you are receiving money from the trust account for services rendered okay yes do you credit the the trust account and then debit your account it depends on where this money is coming from it's coming from the client who you are in charge of the trust account right and the yes. client is paying you the money after you have rendered services already yes sir it goes straight to the business account you have nothing to do with trust at that point oh, okay thank you sir okay uh, transferring from trust to business will only okay will only okay if the client had given you money before rendering services but if the money only comes after you have rendered services the money will go straight to the business account it must not first visit the trust account right another hand i saw another hand um yes sir it's the boho i think yes the boho yes you have partially answered me i wanted to find out um, what happens in a situation where the money has been deposited into the trust account by mistake the money was meant to be deposited into the business account but the client deposited it into the trust account so how do you fix you that transfer in the business account yes they've answered you it's okay but we we are going to to deal with many of these situations as we go so i was simply laying down the the foundation and i'm glad that the foundation is becoming very strong and solid I sort of say I didn't get that answer. He answered even before I finished my question. Oh, he said you will simply correct by transferring from the uh, trust account to the business account. Okay. Yes. You, you take it from the wrong account to the right account. Yes. Okay. All right. We, we are going to deal with a lot of this. We are going to deal with a lot of these and um, they'll become clearer as we deal with them. All right, can we can we take an example to illustrate what we were dealing with uh, just now? And I I will ask for your full participation here. All right, let me give you a set of facts. Let me give you a set of facts. You have recently opened your practice. A certain man visits you in your office. He identifies himself as Dr. Dan. He consults with you. He tells you he has marital problems with his wife, Manana. And he desires a divorce. He wants you to assist him with a, a divorce. And he gives you a deposit of 10,000 rands for you to assist in the divorce process. How do you deal with this? You open a trust uh, account. Sir. I think the, uh, the deposit should be going to the trust account. Trust account. Trust account. Why it's trust account? Services have not been rendered yet. And it's not your money. <clears throat> it is not your money. Services have not yet been rendered. Hi, Shelly, I'm seeing your hand. Um, I wanted to respond, but I see my colleagues have already responded. OK, thank you. So because you, you have received money, Hi, um, Elfas Matebula, Kalanga. Uh, well, this is a hand that I raised uh, some time ago, but I wanted to ask something not related to this. Okay. Yes. Um, I don't know if I, I can be allowed to do so, or should I ask it once we are done with the, the subject, this one? If it's not far from this, you can ask, but if it is, perhaps we can reserve it for later but if if it has to do with your understanding of the concepts discussed here you may raise it okay yeah i just wanted to check you were talking sir about the issue of business and 
I just want to check if uh, saying it's a practice, is it a problem or is it not uh, allowed? Because there's business, there's practice. I don't know if the two do relate. That's one question. But one last question, it relates to uh, the differences between the, uh, you know, the cash book for the trust and for the business. Uh, yes. For one to tell a difference, should I title it as a trust cash book or business or practice cash book? Can I do that? Okay, we, we, we said already that for the purposes of your trust account, you will have a trust cash book. And for the purposes of your business account, you will have a business cash book. Do you get it, yes. uh, Mr. Matebula? Yes, yes, I, yes, I do. I do. Yes, you'll have a trust cash book and a business cash book. All okay. of them are under your practice. So, your pract in your practice, you will have a business cash book and a trust cash book. Yes, but what I'm trying to say is that I cannot just write a cash book. No, Should no, I you'll write trust with... cash book, not cash book. Trust yes. cash book. If it is relating okay. to trust, you'll have to indicate that it is a trust, trust cash book. Is... If it relates to business, you'll have to state that it is business cash book. Okay. No. Thanks, thanks, thanks. All right. And then the last one of a business and a practice? Simply refer to it as practice, but as a practice, you are running a business, not so. Yes. Yes. It is so. Yes. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, sir. Can we, can we move further and deal with the example I have given to you? You have said the money must go to trust, and the reason you gave is that the money is not yours yet. The money belongs to I mean, your plan. And this is because you are still going to render a service. Come, come, come. Please mute yourself. Please mute yourself. Let us not hear that. All right. So we are going to have to open a trust cash book. We'll have to open a trust cash book so that we can record the funds we have received from our client dot down. So we will have to open a trust cash book. This is what we will do. We will draw a T account. We will draw a T account. And give it a name. We'll draw a T account and give it a name. And what will the name be? The name is going to be Tatana Trust Account. Mm -mm. No. Mm -mm. Trust Cash Book. Trust Cash it, Book. It's going to be a Trust Cash Book because we, we agreed that. Um, we will use the trust cash book to record this money. My T does not want to draw here. What's happening? Sorry, sir. Is this the section 862 trust account? Yes. Oh, thank you. Uh, um, so as we're using T accounts, can we use columns as well? Yes, you can for as long as they have um, um, uh, two sides, the debit and the credit. All right. Yes, but I'm using specificities for illustration. For class purposes, do you follow? So that you understand when I say T account, how does it look like? But you can also use, yes. you can simply insert a table which has two columns. Asking two quick questions. 
can you use columns? Yes, you can use columns. You can use T accounts. You can. Yeah. Okay. Hey, now you're account. calling us stupid. Can you mute mute yourself at least while you're calling us stupid so we don't hear you calling us names? All right. So please mute ourselves. Please mute yourself. Please mute yourselves. Right. So <laughs> we have opened an account here. And what is this? Trust cash book. And we said that when we receive money, we record on one of the two sides. Which side is that? The is it the debit, debit side? Debit. Is it the debit, debit. side? And debit. not the credit yes. side. Right. It will be the debit side. So this is what you will say. You will record. You will write your client's name. Dan, and you write the amount you have received from your client. Dan on the debit side. Do you follow? So this, yes. this yes, way, sir. it means you have received 10,000 rent from your client, Tatana, and this money still belongs to the client. Yes, Tatana, somebody was saying something? I just to intervene. Uh, mustn't you indicate uh, currency like rands or dollars? It's not necessary. Right. How about debt? How about what? Debt. Debt. I'm saying debt, debt, debt. Oh, debt. Uh, for now, it's not necessary. Well, there will be transactions where we will be recording dates. For now, let's deal with the principle. Right. So the fact that you have recorded on the debit side of the trust cash book means that you have received funds from the person whose name appears there. Right. The law also says that we need to comply with what is called double entry system or dual entry system. What this means is that for every debit entry that you make, there must be a corresponding credit entry. For every debit entry that you make, there must be a corresponding credit entry. What does this mean practically? What it practically means is that in our case here, we need to open another account which we are going to credit. We need to open another account, which we are going to credit. And whose account will this be? It will be an yeah, account for our client. And who's our client? Yeah, done. Yeah, done. Yeah, done. So we must open an account for that done so that we can credit it. We need to open an account for our client, Tatana, so that we can credit it. And this will not just be Tatana, but it will be Tatana in trust. We must show that this account has been opened in trust because the funds were received in trust. We need to show that it is Tatana in trust. And then we credit. And in crediting, we also narrate. And our narration will simply be trust cash book. And we write the figure there, 
10,000. So you will see that we now have two accounts. The second one, being Tatana in trust, was opened so that we may comply with the dual entry or double entry system of bookkeeping. This way, our transaction becomes complete because the principle says that for every debit entry that we make, for every debit entry that we make, there must be a corresponding credit entry and vice versa. So in bookkeeping, you cannot just credit without debiting. Neither can you just debit without crediting somewhere. So once you debit, you must know that you must credit somewhere. Or if you credit, you need to debit somewhere. This is a principle that you should not forget. You need to master this. You need to know that if I make a debit entry, I must also make a credit entry somewhere. Does it make sense to you? Sir, can I ask a question? You may. Okay, so the reason, am I correct to say the reason why we are using trust cash book as a description in Tatana in trust is because already the description was given in trust cash book as Tatana. So there's no need for us to say Tatana on Tatana in trust. Yes, yes. It is because we are showing the link between these two um, accounts. We are actually demonstrating the fact that Tatana's account in trust was created by the trust cash book or by an entry in the trust cash book. In fact, Tatana in trust was given birth to by the entry here. So we are showing the link here. We are showing the link here. So your understanding is correct. Uh, can I ask a question? Thank you. Can I ask a question? Uh, yes, you may. Look, um, I just want to understand the rationale behind now crediting Tatana's account here because I was understanding that uh, the debit is when the money comes in, we've got it in the cash book. Now, uh, going to Tatana's in trust account, we are now recording it on the right hand side, which is the credit, meaning, like you said, it's money that have to go out. We'll, could that be the, 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 the rationale to say this money still belongs to Tatan? Yes. Or is what it just a principle to say since it was in the uh, debit, then this side it have to be credited? Should, could there right. be any other reason? Right. Here's the answer. Here's the answer. It is correct that in so far as a cash book is concerned, when you receive funds, you record on the debit side. And when these funds go out, you record on the credit side. When you take money out, you will record on the credit side. But this is in so far as a cash book is concerned. Tatana in trust is not a cash book. Tatana in trust is not a cash book. It is just a ledger. It is just a ledger. It does the opposite of what the cash book does. But the simplest way is, the simplest way is to simply say that this money we have received or this money which we say we have in the trust account is in fact due to Tatana. This is why it is on the credit side 
of our client's account in trust. It is due to the Dan. And you will see that if we were to pay the Dan, this 10,000 rand, if we were to pay the Dan, you would see that we would credit the trust cash book showing that money is going out and we would debit Tatana, and Tatana would now be receiving the money. But for now, it is owed to Tatana. Then it must be on the credit side of Tatana's account in trust and on the debit side of our own trust cash book. Thank you very much. You are welcome, Tatana. Right, right. Can we take it further? Can we now deal with another client? Tatana went out and um, spread a word that there is a new firm in town. They know what they are doing. And the next day, you consult with another client called Vazaya. You consult with another client called Vazaya. This client, Vazaya, gives you 100,000 as a deposit for property he intends buying. How do you deal with this deposit of 100,000? Trust cash book. Trust cash book. Why trust cash book? It's not, not your money. It's not your money. It's the event in the future. On which side of the trust cash book are you going to record this? The the debit debit debit. Debit. On the debit side. Left hand side. On the debit side. That being the left hand side. And the reason we're going to the debit side is that um, we are receiving, not so. Yes. Yes. We'll write on the debit side of the trust cash book, we will record Vazaya. And how much are we getting? 100,000. 100,000. 100, is that all we do? No, we open no, a ledger. Interest. No. What open else? Open a ledger. What else do we do? Open a ledger. Open a ledger account for my interest. We open a ledger for our client. Vazaya, yes. We open a ledger for Vazaya. We open a ledger for Vazai. Why do we do this? Double entry, Double entry and credit. Yeah. And it's not just Vazai, but it is Vazai in trust. Do you follow? It's Vazai in trust. And we do what we did with Tatan. We credit. And our narration will be trust cash book, and the amount is hundred thousand. Sorry, sir, I have a question, please. Yes. My question is: Will I be wrong to write that it's um, Vazaya, Vazaya's bank account? For my own explanation, since the money is leaving the account and into the trust, or do I have to write that it's in it's Vazaya in trust? Simply write Vazaya in trust because this is not Vazaya's bank account. It's not Vazaya's bank account. It is money in your own bank account. That is in your own trust banking account. But then you opened a file for your client where you are making these endorsements you have also created in your books of account an account for Vazaya. 
but this account is not in the bank. It is in your set of books in your practice. So simply write Vazaya in trust and credit it with the amount of 100,000 and your narration is trust cash book. Is it clear for everyone? Am I correct to say the ledger accounts are the reflection of the trust book accounts where the money is in the bank? Yes. Yes, because as I said to you earlier, the cash book represents your bank account. Your cash book represents your bank account. And this is why on a monthly basis, you will compare the cash book and the bank statement to see if there are similarities or differences. It is because your cash book should be a reflection of your bank account. Is it clear for everyone? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Hello. Un yes. Is that a hand? Yes. Me. So My now hand was have... first. Okay, go, 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 go. Fine. Um, I wanted to ask about the um, interest because um, I'm used to it being called a creditor. So instead of saying that I'm an interest, I would just say that I'm a creditor. And yeah, and then I would follow the principle that because it's a creditor, it will increase on your credit side. So that will be um, how I've always done it. So uh, this is the first time I see it. Is it the new way of uh, accounting for it where you call it interest? Okay. And not, not creditor? Okay. Remember that this is accounting for lawyers. And as lawyers, we have clients. It is true that when our clients have money in the trust account, they become creditors. In fact, we even call them trust creditors. But our clients are not just creditors. They have names. Our clients have names. So we use their names because we need certainty. We need to know which clients we are dealing with. We don't just group them together. Instead, we deal with them individually because they give us their money individually and we need to account to them individually except in cases where you have simply received unidentified deposits. You have received unidentified funds. You do not know from whom these funds come from and they are different. This is when you can simply group them and perhaps call them various clients in trust. But it is important to emphasize that it is in trust. And the reason for this is simply that we have two set of books, unlike a normal business. In a normal business, it's just one account and that's it. It's the business account. But in a legal practice, we have two accounts because we have to account for the trust and for the business. So you need to specify. If you do not specify, it will create a confusion because there will be times when you will deal with Tatana in business, Vazaya in business. 
because there will be times when these clients will be owing you. Now that, now that they have funds in your trust account, they are trust creditors. But once you start rendering services for them and you start billing or you start writing fees, they become business debtors and you will have separate books which you will open for them in business. And those books will need to indicate that they are in business. I'm not sure if I am clear to you, madam. Yes, you answered um, perfectly. Thank you. You are welcome. So please let us call them this way that I am calling them. Let us not even um, try another way that may may be confusing confusing sometimes we come with ways and we think that they are easier to understand when when in fact they are incorrect they uh, move you out of the way all right so we have opened an account for mozaya in trust and we have credited it Let's say another client walks in and identifies herself as Kokwana. And she consults with you. She gives you 50,000 for you to attend to the registration of a company on her behalf. What do you do with this? Mm. Record it in the yeah, trust yeah, book. On the trust trust book. What do you say? On the debit yeah. side of the trust cash book. Yes. How much? 50,000. Kokwana. Kokwana, mm. 50,000. I advocate what did you say the purpose of that 50,000 rents was for? It's for you to register a company for her. And this is why you came to the trust cash book and not the business cash book. Trust money. It's trust money. Yeah. Is this all you do? No, we need to follow the entry principle. You open a ledger, you open a ledger for double entry, double entry principle. Yeah, trust. You open an account for Kokwan. 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 So we are opening an account for Kokwana in trust. trust. In trust. <laughs> yes. Kokwana in trust. What do we do here? We credit the account of Kokwana. Trust cash book. How much? 50,000. So do you see that? 50,000, 50, yes. On the credit side of Kokwana in trust. Trust. So do you see uh, that? Yes. yes. Will it be wrong to say, for instance, is cash from trucks, cash book, um, recording that is money received from Tequana or money belonging to Tequana? On which account? So, for instance, we are uh, drawing a, a um, we're, we're getting this money from trust cash book and opening a ledger, and we say this money, we're recording it from. Trust cash book, 
Then we said uh, deposit receipts from Kokwana. Yeah, but I want to know if that narration will be appearing on Kokwana's accounting trust or on the trust cash book. Um, uh, remember the first uh, book of entry will be trust cash book. Then yes. when we put in a ledger, then yes. we'll be saying on the ledger, the narration will be from trust cash book. Uh, yes. Then we said a deposit, I mean, uh, um, then we said uh, Kokwana. It, it, it's okay, but you are giving too much information. Trust cash book is sufficient. There's nothing wrong in what you are saying, but you are giving too much information. And in the process, you are wasting time. You have two hours and 15 minutes in your examination. Mm. Do, do you get it? But there's nothing wrong with what you're saying, because as I understand you, you say you can write from trust cash book deposit received from Kokwana. Once you record trust cash book, we know we know that it is money received from Kokwana because the heading here already says Kokwana. Okay. It's already given, so don't repeat it. All but, right, thank you, sir. But you will not be penalized for writing that. But the problem is you'll be spending too much time on just this half a mark. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Vazaya instructs you to purchase shares at the Johannesburg Stock Exchange for 30,000. You accept the instruction and you pay the stockbroker 30,000 in purchasing the shares. How will you go about recording this um, transaction? It's money going out. Yes. So trust cash book, we're going to debit um, the 30,000 rent. I mean, credit, oh, sorry, credit, credit the credit. Yeah. Rent. Yes, credit. Won't it be from the business account? It's supposed to go to the business. Why business? Account? Because their service is being rendered. Because you're not buying on behalf of the client. From the client. So no, the client but... only available in trust, and we have to show that this money, which we are supposed to use to pay for this uh, uh, thing, is going out from a trust account. Yes. Remember that you are purchasing these shares on instructions from your client. Your no. client requests you or instructs you to purchase shares. And she gives you this instruction because she knows that she has money in your trust account. Uh, sir, but isn't that uh, initially Bazaar's money was to for well, property? Property. Yes. So but now it's a different instruction. Yeah. Remember that as an attorney, you are a creator of instructions. You work on instructions from your client. What if she has changed her mind? about purchasing that property or what if you advised her that transfer of this property will take about three months to register and in the meantime you can buy and sell shares or she received financial advice elsewhere and she has decided that um, of the 100,000, 30,000 should be used to purchase shares. So you can't refuse. It's her money. It is not yours. You are only administering it, but it does not belong to you. It is not yours. Do you follow? 
Yes, sir. Yes. yes. So how will you record this? You debit the, the you credit the trust uh, cash book and you go into credit debit. the trust cash book. Yes, and you say purchase <laughs> shares thirty thousand. If you like, if you like, you can also say purchase shares for Vazai or purchase shares on behalf of Vazai. But say from Tatana then. Eh? Don't you are you not purchasing it now from Tatana? No, it's the credit side of the trust cash book. Don't worry. Okay. Yeah, no, don't worry about that. The fact that it's on the same line with Tatana is immaterial. What is material is the fact that it is on the credit side. Money is going out. What will be wrong is if you, instead of debiting Vazaya, you debit Tatana. Do you follow? Yes. Yes. Purchased shares for 30,000. We have credited the trust cash book. What else must we do? Uh, we, must, we must debit Vazaya. We must debit Vazaya. And what does this show? when we debit Vazaya? The liability Double goes down. Aha, it shows that we are taking 30,000 from the 100,000 that Vazaya has to do what? To purchase shares. It's clear for everyone. Where do you record this? Isn't the wording wrong? Why did you put purchase shares in um, the trust cash book without putting a name? Because now it's just hanging as a purchase share. Shouldn't it say Vazaya purchase shares? So that this is why I said to you earlier, madam, I said, if you like, you can say purchased shares for Vazaya or purchased shares on behalf of Vazaya, 30,000. Do you remember this? Do you remember I explained it exactly this way? Okay. Sorry, sorry, say. Would, would, would I be wrong if I I I I, I um record it directly like on the on Vazaya um there on the trust cash book? Say I put it um in the second line there on the trust cash book directly with Vazaya so that I do not get confused. There, there's nothing wrong. Um, our interest is for you to understand that when money goes out you record on the credit side. That is what we are interested in. Whether you put it on the same line as Vazaya or as Tatana, it's, it's immaterial. What is important is the fact that it is only on the credit side, uh, showing that money is going out. For as long as, for as long as on the corresponding account, you will record on the relevant account. For instance, you know that we are dealing here with Vazaya, and it is Vazaya's money that we are using to purchase shares. So when you will be posting on the corresponding account, you cannot post on Tatana's ledger, but you will post on Vazaya's ledger, not so. All right, sir, all right. Thank you, sir. I'll keep it, sir, I'll keep it sir, can I just make a the, comment? Like, I understand what you are trying to say, Tatana, is the following. To say, instead yes, of putting it here, where yes, it directly is, with Tatana. you are saying it is on the same line as Tatana. Tata. And your yes, understanding is that 
It seems we are investing for Tatana, or it seems we are taking Tatana's funds to invest with or to purchase yes. shares with. And you say yes, you would rather bring it a bit down to align with yes, Mazaya. Mazaya, yes. If you like, you can use stable. Yes, right. can use stable. And, and I'm saying to you, whether you put it here or down there or there is immaterial for as yes, long sir. as, even if it can come here. What is yes. important for our purpose is the fact that money is going out. Um, so Thank you, sir. That's a can I just make a comment? That's a second view. Can I say immaterial? Can I just make a comment, sir? That will, form of the, that will form part of the monthly bank statement. However, it is advisable to use a reference if it's a bank statement to make our monthly statement simple to read. Yes, and this is why I said to you, if you want it to be clearer, you can simply say on behalf of Vazaya. Yes, Do you remember what I said earlier? That if you like, you can write purchased shares on behalf of Vazaya. Vazaya. <laughs> yeah, if you like, sir. sir, can I just make a comment? Yes, you may. Uh, so I think uh, maybe, I'm not sure, but uh, I think the confusion comes in because uh, if one looks at the actual uh, trust cash book, uh, it, it sort of looks similar to the, to the actual leisure um, accounts that you've opened. So I, I think the confusion uh, 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 comes in where one tends to think that the trust, the cash book, is similar to the leisure. And there's a distinct difference between the two as well. It's I think the, the ledger shows you uh, who has money in the account and whose uh, money is expended. It is the ledger that will tell you exactly yes. who's is expended and who has what money in the account. Uh, I'm specifically referring to the recording, when one does the recording of, of, or one does the entries. So I think the confusion of some of the people is that is why they're saying that the, the lines needs to, it needs to be aligned with the, with the specific um, uh, uh, clients. Uh, I'm trying to say that your, your, your cash book, uh, your entries that you do in your cash book is different to the way you do your entries in your leisure, if it makes sense. Okay, so the, I think that that is not necessarily the confusion that they have. The confusion they have is when money is going out, if it's Vazaya's money, their view is that, why don't you align it with Vazaya here? Why do you put it up here and not here? So in answering, I am saying to you, for as long as it is on the credit side of the trust cash book, that amount which is reflected there is going out or has gone out. And then from here, we will need to have a corresponding debit entry. And which account is going to bear this? Which account is going to bear the corresponding debit entry? Um, it's Vazaya. Vazaya's account. It's Vazaya. It's Vazaya. Why Vazaya? She's the one who purchased the shares. Because, because she's the one purchasing the shares. Or she's the one whose money was used to purchase the shares and this is why yes, we sir. debited her in trust so this is what matters which corresponding account will bear the entry will it be tatana or will it be vazaya so if it is vazaya then we are fine uh, can i also comment yes 
Um, I wanted to say on, on the confusion of line items, if the cash book is representing the bank statement, then it would mean that um, if that is the fourth transaction, if that uh, minus 30,000 is the is the amount that is going out, it's going to go line by line. So it, it's going to follow the one that comes after, you know, whatever that happens, the debit credit. So if um, the 30,000 is the fourth um, uh, transaction, it will reflect in the bank, bank statement as so. So it will not go by the names and what it will just yes. go by what goes on in the bank yes. statement. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So, so the confusion should be out. Not so. Certainly. Yes. yes, it's out. Yes. Okay. Let's let's proceed then. Um, so can I suggest that we take um, a comfort break, maybe for five or ten minutes? Let's take ten. Okay, thank you. So we're coming back at um, ten past seven, not so? Yes, sir, that will be fine. All right, let's do so. Hello. Hello. Uh, Professor, tell me what is it? We have two books, right? One is the trust account. And what is the business trust account? Yes. The trust cash book and the business uh, cash book. Yes. Will, will the second one now be the uh, trust account? Say, so can I ask for call for inter interjection, please? Yeah. Yes. Um, I, I think we we've requested for a break. Ten minutes break. So and that, you want to yeah, benefit from this uh, question as well? Yeah, so I think it's it's fair. I grant you. Take the t 10 minutes break and then you can ask the question right after. So that everyone benefits. Yes, yeah, cool. I grant you that. All right. Uh, Dadana, can we, can we wait until it is uh, 10 past 7? Um, others may benefit from your question as well. That's we fine. Uh, three, three minutes. Fine, Professor. Uh, I wasn't aware that the Tatana we're discussing is within the group. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. We are all Tatanas here. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the ladies are Kokwanas. Tatana and Kokwanas. I think yeah. the males will be Tatanas and then the females will be Kokwanas. Yeah. <laughs> 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 maybe 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 Tatana others they don't know what that maybe others they don't know what Tatana means and Kokwani means. It just means uh, yeah, a, a, a respectful way of respecting an, an adult man and then a respectful way of respecting an adult lady. <laughs> yeah. It's in Tonga, in uh, one of the official languages in South Africa. Okay. And what does uh, Nyam I, 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 I disagree. I disagree with you. Tatana means father. Kokwana means grandmother. Exactly. Uh, uh, a, a perfect uh, clarification. Kokwana is granny, not grandfather, not grandmother. It's gra no, granny. Gra granny. Granny for both. But it's a grandfather yeah, or grandmother. Yeah. yeah. But but you can use them in an in a context of respecting a lady or a male. Exactly. No, Kokwana, Kokwana is. But some lady. ladies will kill you to so call them Kokwana. Grandmother or grandfather, it depends on the situation. So, but then the example provided uh, by the Honorable uh, Say, uh, he provided no. an example of Reni as the female. <laughs> See you all in 10 minutes.
Ivan, Tatana is not coming back. Right, right, right. Is everyone back? Yes, Tatana. Yes, yes sir. We're back. Yeah, go, go on, yes, we're back. Right. Let us uh, let us proceed. Let us proceed. Yes, yes. You, you're saying you can't hear anything, uh, Majoko? Is that still the case? All right. Let us proceed. Let us uh, uh, proceed. Do you still see my screen? Yes. Right. Yes, we see. Yes. Right. Let us say Kokwan instructs you to invest the fifty thousand in an interest bearing investment account for her benefit. How would you deal with this? Would it be money that you are receiving or would it be money that you are taking out? We are it's opening money. we are opening another trust uh, another ledger for section 86 subsection 4. Yes, but are you receiving this money or are you taking this money out? We are taking it out. Taking it out. We are taking it out and credit the yeah. investment ledger. You are taking the money out by crediting the trust cash book, not so. That's correct. Yes, yes sir. Because we say that when money goes out, we credit. Do you follow? Yes. Yes, sir. Right. Yes, sir. Right. Somebody said to you earlier that a trust account is opened in terms of Section 86 2. Do you remember this? That's correct. Right. Section 86 3 deals with an investment. Section 86.3 deals with investment. Study, your hand is up again. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yes. So I wanted to find out on our manual, ne, the, they are not using the T form uh, of accounting. So I was wondering uh, if we do use the T account for calculations, won't we be penalized? Because on the no, manual, you... they are doing something else. You you won't be. In fact, your your manual shows a a different uh, display or layout of the um, cash books and ledgers. Yes. Um, different from the T accounts, but the principles are still the same. You still debit and credit. You still debit. You still credit in exactly the same way nothing has actually changed except for the layout there and also in the recent exams written since the updating of the manual um, we have still been using the t format um, the exams and the memos um, have been using the the t accounts um but again if you are comfortable with the new format you can also use it you will not be penalized for using either of the two you will okay, not be penalized you. for using either of the two so you can use um uh, this t account you can also use the format in the in the in the manual 
you, you will see that when you use the format in the manual, the cache book is almost the same as the as the ledgers. Um, so it's just that we have date, particulars, and yes. uh, credit. Yes, of course. So, and that is what you will also get in a ledger. So we can refer to we can refer to page date of our study guide. It's highlighted in bold there that they are the same principle. Yes, they are the same. They are the same. So if if you want to go by what is in the manual, you can also use that. By all means, you, you will not be penalized. You also will not be penalized for, for using the, the T formats. And the reason I uh, am following the T accounts is because in the Recent, uh, recent exams we set or we examined, we've been following these and um, also in your tennis admission examinations as well. Um, we are still with the, um, with the T accounts. We are still with the T accounts. All right. So but so if, but once you understand the T accounts, it becomes easier for you to to understand the new format because the the new format is actually a a what a a more simplica a simplification of the the t accounts but it's still the same thing so you still have a debit you still have a credit can we uh, proceed let's proceed thank you right i was saying to you in terms of section 86.3, an attorney may invest funds belonging to a client or to clients. But when you invest in terms of this section 86.3, you are investing for the benefit of the Legal Practi Practitioners Fidelity Fund. Although you are using the client's money to invest or although you are investing clients money for as long as you are investing in terms of section 863 you are investing for the benefit of the legal practitioners fidelity fund the whole interest will go to the legal practitioners fidelity fund there is another type of investment which is in terms Sorry, of... Sorry, so can I ask a question, please? Yes. What then happened if uh, the investment, let's say you invested in the JSC and then uh, the markets crashes, what happens then to the client's money? When you invest, you must make sure that you do it with due diligence. You don't just invest anywhere. You don't invest in the form of a unit trust. You check and you must invest where you can always have access to the money. You must invest where you can withdraw the investment at any time you have a duty to guard against the vanishing of clients money so you do not need situations where client loses money and you end up having to to claim from the legal practitioners insurance indemnity fund you need to avoid that at all costs is it fine? It's OK, sir. Thank you. You're welcome. So this type of investment must be monitored, closely monitored, must be closely monitored. So in terms of Section 86.4, you invest for the benefit of your client. In order for you to do 
a section 86 for investment, you need to have client's written instruction. Client must instruct you in writing, must authorize you in writing to invest. The interest you get from this type of investment will be shared between your client and the legal practitioner's fidelity fund. The interest you get from this investment will be shared between your client and the legal practitioner's fidelity fund. Your client will get 95% of the interest and the legal practitioner's fidelity fund will get 5%. In other words, if you invest in terms of section 86.3, the legal practitioner's fidelity fund benefits. And when you invest in terms of section 86.4, the legal practitioner's fidelity fund still benefits. Although only 5%, but in both types of investment, the legal practitioner's fidelity fund benefits. So in order for an investment to qualify as such in terms of um, Section 86.4, there must be written authority from the client. The client must specifically and in writing authorize you to invest. Must authorize you to invest. In our case here, where we are investing 50,000 on behalf of Kokwan. In terms of which section are we doing so? Uh, Maumani? All right, thank you. I just want to check, uh, what is the purpose of uh, investing through the firm instead of uh, investing directly if no benefit accrues to the firm? investing directly and not through the firm what do you mean no isn't it that the instruction here is um because a certain amount uh, is entrusted to the firm yes and the instruction is deposit um so amount of money so yes. my question is and as you have put it here in terms of um, um the uh, the money that accrues or in terms of interest it seems to me that uh, the benefits are due to the client as well as the legal practice fidelity fund yeah so my question is why is it that the client not deposit or rather invest the money on their own so that even if there are any risks then the client will bear those risks why is it that you know uh, the firm would take that responsibility and maybe at some point to even uh, incur some risk because as you pointed out that uh, the firm needs to pay due diligence to avoid uh, right. wastage and all of that. So my that. question is why is it? I've thank kept thank that. you, thank you. Okay, right, Tatana uh, Mauman, re remember that when the client came to you, she was not coming for you to invest money on her behalf. She came there so that you can render some services for her. And the money she had given to you was to serve as a deposit for the work that you are going to do. But then she says on second thought, you have my money with you and you have not billed me yet. Please 
invest these funds for my benefit so that by the time you bill me and deduct what is due to you, my money would have grown at least. You understand it, uh, Tatanama woman. So it's it, it's not like she came with the money to you for the purposes of investment. She gave it to you for you to do some work for her, and in the process, she says, "Please invest these funds for me." It happens a lot in conveyancing transactions, where the purchaser pays in a deposit of X amount. And whilst awaiting transfer, the purchaser says, please invest for me. Or you, the conveyancer, advise the client that you can actually invest the money for them whilst awaiting the transfer to be registered. Is it making sense, Tatana <laughs> Mauman? Uh, yeah, it's captured. Thank you very much, sir. You are welcome. Can we now invest? Yes, we can. We will invest by taking out the money from the trust cash book. And we take money out of the trust cash book by crediting the trust cash book. And we will say investment on behalf of Kokwa. How much are we investing? 50,000. So we credit the trust cash book and say investment on behalf of Kokwana and the amount is 50,000. And then this time around, we will not debit Kokwana. Excuse me, Prof. Yes. I can't see your screen. You can't? Yes. Does everybody else not see? Because I locked uh, out uh, and came back again. I can see your screen, sir. You can see, can see the screen. We can see the screen. No, it's fine. I'll lock out again and come back. And come back. Okay. Yeah. If right. that will work, please do so, Sam. I'll do that one. So this time around, after taking clients' money out of the trust account, you do not debit the client. You do not debit the client. Instead, you open a separate account for investment. And this is the only time when you will open a new account after taking clients' money out. This is the only time that you will open a new account after taking clients' money out. In every other case, when you take clients' money out, you will credit the trust cash book and debit the relevant client. But here, you will credit the trust cash book as we have done and then open a new account which you are going to debit. And the relevant account that we are going to open here is an investment account is an investment account so we will call these investment in terms of section 86 subsection 4 and we say it is in terms of subsection 4 because we are investing on behalf of a client and our client is Kokwan. And we can also 
give an institution where we are investing. Let's say we are investing with ABSA. So we will record that it is an investment in terms of section 86, subsection 4, for the benefit of Kokwana at ABSA Bank. Does it make sense for everyone? Sorry, sir. Yes. I did. Sorry, sir. So if investment is completely different from buying shares? Yes. Okay. It's different. Okay, sure. Thanks. Thank you. Sir, can I ask a question? Yes. Why would uh, the, the trust account is an interest bearing account, correct? why would you remove the money to put into another investment? Because we want it to grow uh, bigger and better than when it is in the Section 86-2 account. The interest rates are not the same. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So you will debit the investment account. Your narration will be Trust cash book fifty thousand. So this way you have. Uh, sir, I have a question. Yes. When are we making money? Because we are working, but we're not making money. Yes, we will make money uh, shortly. Do you want us to start making money immediately? We can. We can. Remember, we have started being a busy um, uh, practice. And this way, we are busy working, aren't we? When the client instructs us to invest, is that not work? We are working. Maybe. Yes. All right. Okay, can, can I ask a question? Yes. Um, why would you open an investment account of 50,000, right? Because you're just opening a separate account with only 50,000, while the other section 86.2 has a lot more money in the account, meaning that it would accrue more interest anyway because of the balance. And now you're just moving only 50,000 to a separate account. It's not going to make money. Where's the logic there? Oh, oh, money. Okay. Whose money are we investing? Yeah, it's for a client, Kukwana. but yeah. Oh, which client? client? Which uh, client? Kukwana. 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 For whom are you investing? For her, on her behalf. For Kukwana. Kukwana. And why are you investing for her? She is giving instruction. Oh. Because she gave you instructions, not so? Yes. She cannot give you instructions to invest Vazaya's 100,000, can she? No. 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 And she can't because she does not even know if, if there is Vazaya. She does not even know. Even if she knew, she has no authority, does she? Oh, she doesn't. Only Vazaya can do that, yeah. Yeah, but Manana, do, do, do you understand it? Do you understand why we are only investing 50,000? No, it doesn't make sense. It makes sense if uh, you're just thinking for the client alone, but if you're thinking for your the entire investment, how much you could actually earn from having everyone's money in a trust account and making more money, unlike yeah. taking it out to different accounts. I don't think accounts. you understand. Uh, it's, 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 not your money. it's not your money. You can't make decisions on the trust money. You can't make your own decisions on that. You add on, on and remember, the and is that you the instruction. You take the instruction. You don't instruct yourself. Uh, uh, prof. You work on orders, no? uh, yeah. prof, yeah. I, I think uh, we should try. We should we should try and assist one another here. Yeah. Uh, 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 we have got three people that are involved here. You have got Tatana. You have got Vazaya, and you also have got Kokwana. Mm. Who separately uh, paid the firm the 100,000, the 50,000, and so on? 
Now, in this case, you only have one person in this case who happens to be Kokwana, yeah. who is giving you an instruction yeah. on the basis of her money, which is in the trust account. Yeah. Therefore, it means that Vazaya and uh, uh, Tatana, it's none of their business as to what is happening with the money of, of, of Kokwana. Yeah. I think you must understand it in that context. Therefore, the money of Kokwana is the one that will be invested on the basis of the instruction. Yes. And that is why... Can that I also, is why just also add? Listen to this. That is why also, when you purchased shares for Vazaya for 30,000, why didn't you say, no, why only 30,000? Why are you not buying shares for the whole 100,000? It makes a lot of sense there. Why are you not buying shares for Kokwana? Do you remember when we bought shares? And you must yes. remember that, yeah, must remember that I have been to your firm on different purposes and reasons. So can I interrupt? Uh, so so I, I think the other I also just wanted to answer. <laughs> Sir, yeah, can I let's move on. Move on, please. Please let's move on. Uh, who's talking? All right, let's let's move on. Um, can I ask a question? Another important that um, another important thing that you need to understand is is the principle. Even if you were to invest the whole money, the most important question is how would you do that? This is the principle that we, we are showing, that if you invest, you'll take money out of the trust account and this is how you will do it. You will credit the trust cash book and you'll open an investment account which you debit. All right. And then you decide, you decide to invest 20,000 at NetBank. You decide to invest 20,000 at NetBank. How will you do this? And in terms of which section will you do this? In terms of section 86.4. In terms of section 86.2, because you have decided. It's your interest and not your clients. Yeah. It's in terms of 86.3. Yes. Yeah, I'm hearing. I also three. agree that it's in terms of 863. Yes, yes. I'm hearing everything. I concur with 863. All right. 86. You concur with 863. Yes. Somebody say. Yes, because yes, uh, uh, as, as, as for the narrative, the narrative says, but the narrative says you decide. And yes. in this case, you are the attorney. Yes, you decide. It does not you say that me. you are given an instruction by one of your clients. That's why yes. I'm saying 86.3. Exactly. And remember my explanation to you. You open an account, a trust account, in terms of Section 86.2, mm -hmm. and you invest for the benefit of the Legal Practitioner's Fidelity Fund in terms of Section 86.3 and you invest for the benefit of the client in terms of section 86 4. So where it is said that you decide, it means it is you taking the decision. Because 86 4, I said to you, so, must be authorized by client in writing. So if there is no authority in writing from the client, it will not be an investment in terms of section 86.4, but it will be in terms of section 86.3. In our case here, we are investing in terms of section 86.3 because we took the decision to invest. The client does not even know that we are investing their money. So it's an investment in terms of section 86.3. And how much is it that we are investing? So we'll credit 
the trust cash book and say investment in terms of section 86 3. Uh, say your screen is still showing Wazaya in trust. I'm not sure if it's my screen. Wazaya in trust, where? No, I'm saying as I, I thought that as you are making reference to section 86.3, yes. you are also typing on the screen, but what I see I on typed. the screen. I typed, yes. Yeah. Look, look at the credit side of the trust cash book. The last uh, entry there, what does it say on your side? Uh, on, on which side? 20,000. The, the credit side of the trust cash book. Look, yeah, look at my maybe. screen. Sir. Do you see my screen? Top of the page. Top of the page, yes. The trust cash book. <laughs> On that credit side. Okay. Okay, yes. What what did you see there? I see uh, investment on behalf of Cook One. That's why yeah, the next the... item. Okay, yeah, now now I see it. It's it, it has come for yes. Thank you. Uh, prof, I, I have a quick question. Uh, prof, I have a quick question. Hello, Prof. Hello? Yes. Hello, Prof. Yes. Um, uh, is somebody saying something? Yes, I have a quick question, Prof. Yes, yes, sir. Yeah, yes, you you just mentioned that according to Section 86.3, you can um, unilaterally decide to invest your client's money without yes. authority or instructions. From yes. The client. Now, Prof, I want to ask in terms of... Um, uh, if it so happens that the investment uh, is defective, you end up losing money instead of gaining or getting money. Yeah. Perhaps I'm not clued up about the type of investment. So who who, who then uh, remediates that situation? You, is, yes. Is it, it legal? You, yes. Is it the legal? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Legal Obviously, money? it would mean that as a legal practitioner, you messed up. You messed up. You've been negligent. You did not do um, proper checks. There was no due diligence. And you must pay. You must pay. And this is why you have the Legal Practitioners Indemnity Insurance Fund, the LPIIF, uh, to come to your rescue for your negligence. Oh, okay. If I understand you correctly, Prof, investing on, on, on uh, Section 86.3, according to Section 86.3, it's an unnecessary risk. I do not want say, to say it is unnecessary, but you need to invest. Remember that um, our structures leave out of these. Um, if we do not give them this interest, then they do not exist. The LPFF, the LPIIFF, they need this. What happens in the case when we don't have any money in the trust account? If there's no money in the trust account, then there's no yes. money. You For can't the whole invest year. when there are no funds. I'm sorry, sir. The investment in terms of 86.3, uh, where do you take the 20,000 from whose money? How do you take the apportionment from each client's money? It does not matter how you apportion it for as long as there's money in the trust account. Where it matters is when you are investing on behalf of a specific client. That is, where, that is where you need to check how much that relevant client has for you to invest for their benefit. But in the case where you are investing in terms of Section 86.3, it does not matter whose money you are taking. For as long as in your trust account, there is that 20,000 which can be invested. 
So is it that the the trust account money is not your money? How, how do you invest people's money without informing them? Because isn't that stealing? It is not stealing because the law allows it. Section 86.3 allows that, and that is the only instance when you can use uh, trust funds without authority. Um, sorry, sir. So the interest on this investment, section 86.3, do the client benefit from this investment? No. 100% goes to the LPFF. Oh, okay. But my question is, uh, Prof, do you notify the clients that are no. in, in, in your case book? No. 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 All right. You may uh, also not know uh, which, which client's money you used. Do, do you understand? This law. Yeah. I'm sorry, so can I ask you one more question? Do you benefit from the interest of the 20,000? Eh? Do you benefit as the lawyer on the interest of the Section 863 20,000 investment? Do you benefit? No, it goes to no. the LPFF. Oh, so everything interest on that goes to the LP. 100% of the interest. Oh, goes okay. To the so the LPF. client actually doesn't lose anything anyway. No, the client doesn't lose anything. No, yeah. His money is still intact. Okay, but sure. Now, who am I supposed now to get this written authority from if I take that 20,000 and deposit it? Yeah, but we said in terms of section 863, you don't need any written authority. You don't need any authority. Uh, the oh, only time you need return authority is when you invest in terms of section 86.4 for the benefit uh, of your client. Do you, do you like score some points to earn interest and give it to this fund? Uh, does, I mean, does it benefit you in any way? When, when you do what? When you earn interest on the 20,000 and uh, give it to the Fidelity Fund, um, does it benefit you in any way if you give excess money to the Fidelity Fund? No, it just means that you are a good legal practitioner. Oh, okay, I see. Yes. <laughs> wow. <Marky. laughs> hey. <laughs> yes. Can we can we go further? Can we move on? Yes, yes please. All right. Yes. So so yes. we will open an account, not so. Yes. What will we call this account? Investment. Investment in Section Investment in Section A, Subsection 3. Net Bank. Net Bank and Net Bank. I think you do. Okay, Peter. Investment at net back in terms of session 86.3. So investment in terms of section 86.3. Held at net bank. Debit or credit? Debit. Uh, debit. So we will debit this. Yes. And our narration will be trust cash book, not so. Yeah. Yes. 20,000 is the amount we are investing. We close the investment account held at APSA. And on closing the investment account, we receive 3,000 interest. How do we deal with this? The APSA one. 
And which one is the upside investment? Kokwana. It's Kokwana's 86. investment, not so. Kokwana 86. Can I it's repeat it? The investment account and debit the cash book, trust cash book. Mm -hmm. Yes. The bank transfers yes. the people and the interest to trust cash book. Yes. So fine. What we would do ordinarily would be to just come to the investment account and credit this investment account and then debit the trust cash book with a capital plus interest. Do you get me? Yes. But then your manual deals with it in the following way. Um, it recommends that you must first put in the interest in the investment account. In other words, debit the investment account with interest and then you'll simply say 95% interest if you like you can also indicate that this is for Kokwana and then you determine 95% of 3,000, how much is that? 2,850, I think it's that. 2,850. And she got this 2,850 by, by multiplying 3,000 by 95 and dividing by 100. So this gave 2,850. Do you follow? Yes. And then, and then you'll say 5% this is for the LPFF. How much will it be? 150. 150. 150. 150. You will see that these make up a total of 3,000, not so, on the debit side. Yes. Which accounts must be credited with this? Trust. LPFL. Trust cash book. Trust book. Kokwana and LPFF, not so. Because we say that the 2850 is interest due to Kokwan. Oh, excuse me, sir. This morning we should have first been gone to trust cash book or trust bank yeah. account. Okay. Uh, uh, may I ask something? That, is that 95% uh, an interest from the 50,000 rands? Yes. Okay, thank you. We, we gave an instance where from investing the 50,000, you get 3,000 interest or 3,000 as interest. And we say that 95% of the interest is due to the client and 5% is due to LPFF. the LPFF. So we will 
Sorry, Prof. I just yes. want to find out when you debit that investment account, yes. the credit leg, where is it coming from? Yes. So it so must, we need to find credit entries for these debit entries. And which accounts will bear the credit entries? The trust uh, account? We'll, no, we no, always, no, no. we obviously have them, don't we? They are here, written. Yeah, it's a GL, it's a general ledger then. No, they're here. What have we written here? Yes. For, and then here? And exactly. So we must go to Kokwana in and credit. open the in credit interest on Kokwana, and the amount is two eight five six. And then we open an account for LPFF. LPF. 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 And what do we say on this account? Do we just say LPFF? Interest. Interest. Interest in terms of Do we debit or credit this account? We credit it. We, we debit. We credit it. We credit it because we debited the investment account. With how much? 150. Yes. Oh. Do you follow? Yes. Yes, you do. Yes. Any questions? So I just want to check. Well, I just want to check the five percent and the ninety-five percent. Is it the standard uh, percentages? Ninety-five percent for for the client. Uh, five percent for LPFF. Yeah. Yes. Ninety-five percent okay. goes to the client, and five percent goes to the LPFF. Okay. Um, no sorry, sir. One second. Sorry. Uh, must must you give a five percent interest on an eighty-six four investment to the LPF? Must we do what? Must you give a 5% interest to the LPF if you do an 86 for investment? Yes. You have to? Yes, we must. Okay. Client will get only 95%. Uh, prof. Okay. Yes. Thanks. Yeah, you mentioned earlier before you, you did the whole allocation that there is another way actually um instead of debiting the investment um account yes. you you can do it the other way so if you can kindly demonstrate the other way okay the other way would have simply been to come straight to the investment account and credit the amount invested 
the 50,000. Without saying anything about interest here, and only deal with the interest when you come to the trust cash book on the debit side. That is when you would deal with the interest for the first time. And that would be the capital of 50,000 plus the interest of 3,000. And that would give you a total of 503,000. Uh, prof. Uh, yes. That's what I what uh, that that's what I wanted to know because uh, I find it difficult where the money doesn't, especially that interest that you received, it doesn't touch the cash book. Because let's it's say for there. in case, let's say it's for in case now you have to now reconcile that's against that's the bank statement. How are you going to reconcile while it didn't touch the cash book? We are not done with this. Oh. Remember here. We have only shown the growth of the money in the investment account. The investment account is still open. Okay. It's still open. It has not been closed. So in order to close it, we credit. And we say trust cash book. Oh, all right. Do you see? Not, I'm sorry, not 503,000, but 53,000, eh? 53,000, that would be the, the 50,000 that we invested, the 50,000 that we invested plus the 3,000 interest. We credit the trust cash book. I mean, we credit the investment account. And our narration will be trust cash book, 53,000. And then it's a it's a credit entry. Do you see? Yes. There must be a corresponding debit entry. There must be a corresponding debit entry, and the corresponding debit entry will be in the trust cash book, where we will say investment. Or if you want to be more specific. You can say Kokwa investment. And then you record fifty-three thousand. Uh, prof. Yes. So is it a matter of either or or you use both? Where? Where you um, you debit the trust cash book and you credit the investment account and you I'm no longer hearing you say. Am I audible? Yes, you are. Yes, I'm asking Prof if you do both in terms of uh, the trust cash book and the investment account. Remember, you first started by explaining that you debit the investment account, indicating the percentages of the interest for the LPFF and the, um, the, client. And the, the client. And then I asked um, a question, if there is another way. So now I'm, I'm asking if this is another way of doing it, or you have to do both. Uh, okay. the, yes. If you if you follow this method of first recording the interest in the investment account, you will debit the investment account with the interest showing the 95% and the 5%. And thereafter, you will credit the client and the LPFF, you'll credit the client and the LPFF with the interest. After that, after that, you must go back to the investment account and actually withdraw the funds which you had invested plus the interest. 
in our case here, we had invested 50,000 and our interest is 3,000. So it means we are withdrawing 50,000 plus 3,000, which is a total of 53,000. So we must, we must credit the investment account to show that this money is going out of the investment account. Our narration is trust cash boom because the money is going back to the trust cash book. And because we are receiving the money in trust, we will debit the trust cash book. This is how you deal with um, investment. So you must at the end withdraw from the investment account and receive the invested funds in the trust cash book on the debit side. Okay. Yeah, Prof, yes, uh, thank you so much for that. And then I was wondering if um, you also are amenable to share uh, your your word document where you have been drafting these entries and uh, the the T. Yes, I'll uh, share with yes, you. Yes, entries. Okay, thanks. I, I will share with you. So, so you understand this investment. So it it does not end here. Others others prefer also that that when you deal with the interest in the investment account when you deal with the interest in the investment account you need to show their movement from the investment account to the client and the lpff's account by means of a journal they prefer that you must show this movement by means of a trust journal. But we are not going to do that today to avoid confusing you. We are not going to do that today to avoid confusing you, but we will deal with this on, on Wednesday. But if you like, just for you to see how that is recorded, you would simply go to a book called Trust Journal. But that is not what I want us to deal with now uh, to avoid confusing you. I want you to master these principles now, but also know that there are those who prefer that a trust journal must also be used when you will debit the Section 86 um, for investment account and credit the client and the LPFF and then post to relevant ledgers. But that is not what I want us to, to deal with now. If needs be, we will deal with that on Wednesday when we do conveyancing transactions. So for now, I wanted you to know that there are investment practices that an attorney may engage in. Is it making sense to all of you? Yes, sir, but I have a question. Yes. Uh, yes. yes. Oh, thank you. Uh, the, the, the account uh, Kokwana uh, in trust, trust cash book, Kokwana, the 53,000. Why is it 53,000 and not 52,850? Why is it not 52,850 on Kokwana? Yes. It is. Look at Kokwana here. Kokwana in trust on the credit side is 50,000. And below the 50,000, there is interest of 2,850. Or is it because it has fallen on, a, on another page? 
No, no, I mean the a trust okay, page yes. book there at the top, the first part of the like page one. Yes, the whole money you can trust go up to trust. Okay, you are saying because the trust cash book. Yeah. Yes, there where you say Kokoana and then you say investment fifty three thousand. Why is yes. it fifty three? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it seems I agree with you because the other I think it's because Kokoana uh, you invested the fifty thousand rent of Kokoana. Yes. Okay, let me explain the other money goes to LPL. Okay. Am I correct, Prof? To say you are, you are correct to say what, say? You've disappeared. To say that the reason, the reason for, for the 53,000 in the uh, trust cash book is because uh, you were instructed by Kokwana to invest the 50,000. Yes. That's, that's why it appears as such the 50,000 plus the interest. Plus the interest. On the cash book. On the trust yes. cash book, but then when, when you look Sorry, at, sir. Yes, oh. it's plus interest. And but also, what about the. Sorry, Greg. That's okay, okay, listen to this. Listen to this. Listen to this. Remember that. Remember that the debit entry here on the trust cash book, this 53,000 is corresponding with the credit entry on the investment account here. Do you see this? Yeah. Is everybody following? Yes. 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 Right. And then the law says, the law says from these 3,000, your client is only entitled to 95%. Not so. And what yes. is 95% of 3,000? What is it? 2,850. 2, and this is what you have shown to be due to your client. 2,850. Do you see? Yes. And this credit entry, which you see on, on Kokwana's account in trust, actually corresponds with the debit entry in the investment account. Do you see? Yes. Yes. And, and where is the other part of the money? Where is the other part of the 3,000 after the 2,850? LPFF. Yeah. The other yeah. part of the money is with the LPFF. And how much is that? 150. It's 150. And this 150 on the credit side of the LPFF's account actually corresponds with the debit side of the investment account. And how is this explained here? 5% interest. interest. Do you get it? Yes. Yes. Yes, we do. Yeah? Yes, we do. Thank you. But I'm still not the essay. Uh, uh, I might have missed it, let, but let, earlier let, you said... Uh, up here. I think the student is confused here. What's confusing the student is this. First of all, this money must be transferred from the investment account to the trust account. Then it is from the trust account that this 3,000 will be shared to the beneficiaries. Do you understand? I mean, in the capital amount and the interest will be transferred from the, uh, from the investment account to the trust account. Then it is from there, this uh, uh, interest will be transferred to the respective beneficiaries. Do you understand? To trust Chinan. Transfer Chinan. Uh-uh. No, no. Don't invoke a transfer journal now. But um, sir, your your explanation 
makes a lot of sense and in fact is the way that I said we would ordinarily do. Do you remember when I said to you, ordinarily when we close investment accounts, we would simply come to the investment account and credit the amount that we invested without the interest. We would simply credit the investment account and then go to the trust cash book and debit the capital plus the interest. And then from here, we would then split the interest. This would be the only time from the cash book that we would credit Kokwana with 95% and the LPFF with 5%. But I said to you, I said to you that your manual as updated now recommends a different way. And what is that different way that your manual recommends? It recommends that you first show the interest coming into the investment account. This is why we demonstrated these here. This is what your manual says must be done. Show the interest coming into the investment account and then move to crediting the relevant parties being the LPFF 5% and 95% your client. Uh, is it uh, making sense? Please, please. Yes, it, it makes sense. sense. Yes. So, uh, sorry, sir. Yes. After you post your interest, your entry of 53,000 in your debit side of your cash book, uh, do you also post uh, 3,000 entry there on the debit on the credit side? We are done already because. We started okay. at we started at the investment account. Do you remember? Mm, yeah. With the fifty three thousand, we credited 3, 000, the investment yeah. account. So yes, we yes. were completing the <coughs> entry by debiting the trust cash book. Okay, so we don't add a credit entry in the trust cash book for the interest. The, we the can 3, do so when we are now paying. Let's say oh, we decide. Oh. Yes, let's say we decide to pay the LPFF. We can credit the trust cash book and say paid LPFF. How much? 150. 150. Like this. 150. Yes. Oh, yes. Do you see? Yeah. Yes. But yes, then, yes. But then it's a credit entry that we have made. Do you yeah. see? What else must yes. happen? They will debit the LPF account LPF. in the balances. Debit the LPFF. And our narration would be trust cash book. Okay. And 150. Okay. Then this way it means we have paid the LPFF. We have started by doing what? We have started by crediting the trust cash book and debiting the legal practitioner's fidelity fund. And now that we have the same value on both the debit and the credit sides of the LPFF's account, we can proceed to close it. All right. Sorry, Prof. Yes. Yeah. Are we, are, we yeah. are we allowed to invest for a longer period? No. We're not allowed. Yeah. So how long are we allowed to invest? Oh. Re remember, your investments will always be periodic. It must be of such a nature that when the money is needed, you are able to withdraw it. That is why you will not do 
um, your 32 days notices and other things. When the money is needed, it must be capable of being brought back to the trust account. So, so can I still leave that 50,000 there in the investment account and only split the interest if I reinvest? Yes, you can, you can do that. But remember that in this case, it's a section 86.4. So it means you will have to speak to client for you to do so. Right. And also, when you receive the interest, you must know how to deal with it. So the money can be invested uh, for how long, uh, sir? Anyone, when are you going to need them? Sorry, sir, can I ask you a question? Hello. When uh, you work with the client's money and that, do they need to sign a power of attorney or very short? What are you saying? When you work with the client's money, do they need to sign some sort of power of attorney or do they or do you automatically have power to work with their money? If uh, Do they need to sign a power of attorney? No. When you are investing? When you're working, yeah, when you're investing, um, can you sign a power of attorney and use your discretion to do an investment on okay. behalf of the client? When you invest on behalf of the client, the law says you must do so in after receiving written authority from the client to invest. A special power of attorney is a written document and it qualifies as such authority to invest. So if the client gives you a special power of attorney for you to invest, then you can invest because that is a written authority. A special, a special power of attorney is authority. Do you follow? Can, uh, can, yes, we, I do, I do. can we do something on Tatana before we, we knock off? I see we are left with five minutes. So, brother, I just yes. asked a question about the period in which you can invest. Um, I didn't grasp it at all. The period in which I can for six months, two months, or money must just lie in an investment account and, and, and it accrues with the interest. Re remember that the principle is that the funds you are investing must be available when they are needed. So you cannot invest for a long fixed term because that is associated with charges. Let us say, for example, you decide to invest for a year and the money is needed in a month or two. Obviously, if you want to make a withdrawal from the investment account, you are attracting charges. You need to check the purpose for which you have received the funds. And in most of the cases, you are receiving funds for you to render certain services. And the law says that at the time when the money is needed, you must be able to, to withdraw it. It must come back without any hassle. So you cannot be given a maximum period to invest, but it must be on an account or in an account that you can withdraw at any time without any hassle. Can I quickly ask a question? Yes. Um, my question is the entrance by Kukwana, that's the 2850 that was earned, is now reflected in the trust cash book. So in the trust cash book, does the OPFS also take the 100% of the interest in, in the 
trust cash book or is that 2850 exempted from that that interest to be earned by the LPFS? Right. Remember that when it is now in the uh, trust account, the Section 82 trust account, it's no longer deemed to be an investment in terms of Section 86.4. It's just money in the trust account. And together with other funds, they are generating interest, which the LPFF has interest in. So such interest will be given to the LPFF because now when you are looking at the, uh, at the generated interest in the Section 86-2 uh, trust account, we are not looking at a specific client, but we are simply looking at the total funds in the trust account. And it may not even be easy to tell whose money made more interest than uh, whose money. Uh, sorry, that, uh, sorry, that investment for can you sorry sorry I was you, just... do you charge charges do you can you charge charges for do that doing that investment on behalf of the client and 86.4 do you charge any fees you you may charge fees because it is a business transaction that you are conducting Although in trust, you are rendering a service by Sorry. investing. Okay, sure. Thank you. Prof, so I just want to confirm. So the interest from the LPFF is then double calculated on the same amount. The interest on the LPFF? The, 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 my previous question that I asked just before the slidey spoke and you answered and said, yeah, the LPFF takes 100% interest on the trust. So that means that, for instance, Kokwana's 2850 interest is double accounted for by the LPFF. There's double accounting of interest no, no. on that amount. Kokwana, Kokwana will still get the 2850. But the 2850 may make further interest when it is in the trust account. So okay, thanks. those interests will go to the LPFF, but Kokwana will still get the 2850. It's not like there's going to be a further deduction from the 2850. No, I think you are talking about new interest generated by the 2850 when it lies in the trust account. Not so. Yes. Okay. So all of that then goes to the LPFF. Yes. Okay. Thank you, bro. Thanks for clarity. You are. And may I ask a question, bro? Yes. Yes. I just want to establish what is the actual percentage interest on the trust account? It, it will vary from one bank to another. Banks do not charge the same way. Rates differ. Investment institutions also have their own rates. So you will investigate when you are in practice as to which one gives better rates than others. Oh, okay. Thank you very much. Sorry, sir. If you do end up having a very busy trust account, uh, then uh, the checks and balances and that, uh, where do you send your trust account, uh, like for checks and balances and that? Because obviously you're working in good faith. So uh, maybe you must, uh, sending a 5%, uh, the 5% to the uh, LP, if, if somehow you must have, make a must have in that and you don't send the 5% on something. So checks and balances, how does it work on this account? Because you work with a lot of money at times. Yes, there's a system that you normally will arrange with a bank that um, interest must be automatically paid to the LPFF. So the bank, know, uh, the bank knows this. When there's interest due to the LPFF, they automatically pay that over to the LPFF on a monthly basis. So you don't even need to struggle with this. You simply make um, uh, suitable arrangements with the with your bank. 
So they do that. Okay. And what, yes, what about tax purposes and that? Is VAT charged on anything or any transaction or so? But, but remember, VAT will be when you are a VAT vendor yourself. Okay. Thank you, sir. You are welcome. Hello, sir. Yes. Prof, I wanted to find out something. Um, all this transaction, do you need to purchase a financial system or you can do them on Excel? You don't have you, any requirement that says that you must have a financial system. Now you can do this on your own. If um, you want um, a system, you can also get one. But if you can, you can do this on your own. The size of your practice will also de uh, dictate to you which system will work better for you. All right. Okay, Prop, please. Um, I, I want to find out uh, regarding the two accounts you mentioned, the business and the, the other accounts. If I have a, a, a separate account before, which is related to my business, has the legal practice any interest on that? The Legal Practice Council has interest in the trust account. So if you have a trust account, you must furnish the LPF, uh, I mean the Legal Practice Council with the particulars of that account. And you must also give them consent to inspect the account at any time. I mean my own personal business outside the practice. Now, if it's outside the practice, that is something else. Yes, but I think... I think that we is something else. Past our, the LPF, our I mean, the LPC is interested in the trust account, your practice trust account. Okay. Can Thank I ask you. one question, sir? Just Can we continue yeah. tomorrow? If the client goes insolvent oh, and the then he has 100,000 in the trust account, uh, can the creditors have access to it? Is the client doing what? If the client goes insolvent, and the creditors are at his money, can they have access to that deposit that he put in the trust account? It's only you knowing about the funds in the trust account. It's only you and the client. Yeah, if the client goes insolvent. The client is insolvent and he wants his money back. Yeah, he goes insolvent, obviously, and the creditors will want the money. You understand? So do you need to tell them about the money that's in the trust account? Because you didn't do any work for him, but he went insolvent and the money was in the account. They can claim it from you because it is uh, his money. Oh, okay. Remember oh. that uh, for as long as you've not rendered services, it still belongs to the client. Yes, it belongs to the client, yes. Uh, Prof, I just want to ask you with relation to uh, a variety of clients. Sorry, I'm sorry, Prof, to interject, Bonnie? but I think we've passed our task time for today. So if you can officially close that and people who want to yes. ask questions, they stay behind. Please, Prof, yes. we had a wonderful session today, but I think now you have to officially close class and then they can stay behind our colleagues who wants to ask questions. Thank you, Sufunda. Thank you. Um, so, it's okay. Just before you go, um, I've heard you mentioning that you are going to be running this um last pro until Friday, uh, but when I checked our schedule, it looks like next week we still have classes. I just want you to clarify that on our program, this class it's going to run until next week Friday. But I heard you mentioning that it's from today until Friday. I said it's from today until Saturday the eighteenth. Okay, our schedule says until next week, Friday. Okay. Yep. No, it stays um, the 18th. It's a, rev it's a revision next week, it's not classes. Sorry? Next week is revision. Revision, revision, revision is this week. No, man, if, if, if Prof wants to do these things this week, why you would want us to go the, the whole length of next week? So next week is dedicated for revision. We do everything this week, it's fine. Why, why, what do you want for, uh, for next week? No, I just want All right. Next week um, is where? Where do you see next week? Tomorrow then at um, half past five, let us be starting. Um, tomorrow we 
we'll finalize on journals and um, correspondent accounts. We'll do journals, we'll uh, see how to write fees and then deal with uh, correspondent accounts. All right. Thank you. Uh, before you go, you. Uh, according thank to you, my thank, you. thank you very much. Next week is only an exam on Saturday. Um, maybe you, no, you have to start studying. Our calendar, you have to start our calendar on the e-leader. Our calendar on the e-leader still reflects this um, subject for the whole week. That's why I wanted clarity so that we can be able to plan for next week. If that's not the case, I wanted advocate to indicate and confirm that this class is only for this week and so that we know. I think you should see this week. That's good, sister, you ask. Good night. But yeah, I think that like, um, Costa literally has given you that space, yep. you know, to, to, to do yourself, to make sure. Uh, yeah, and also in terms of the solid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you.